Good afternoon. I hope you're all having a really good day today. Um, I'm going to continue the teaching. Um, it's basically going to be a teaching on authority that the Lord has given us. And I had to begin in the book of Genesis because Genesis is where the authority began. When God created Adam and Eve, he gave them authority. And the word was dominion over the, all the earth. So let's go back to um, Genesis. Chapter 2, I believe it was. I hope you all have your Bibles ready today. And ready to take some notes. So it says in uh, chapter 2, The Lord God placed the man in the Garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. Now that word watch in some versions is to guard and keep it. And what he gave him was dominion, was a godlike rule and authority over the garden. Pretty much God handed the garden over to Adam and Eve and said, Now, I put you in charge of this. Now guard it and keep it and have dominion over it. I'm going to look uh, up some words for you on the word dominion. If you look up these words, it means a lot more to you than um, just um, the word itself, if you look them up in the dictionary even. So, the word, he gave the man dominion over every creeping thing. Dominion means the power to rule, control over a country or a region, etc. He told him to subdue the earth. And God has not changed his mind about that. Subdue, subdue means to conquer and bring into subjection, to vanquish, to bring under control, especially by an exertion of power, of the will, to get control of a violent or dangerous person or a group by using force, punishment, etc. That's what the word subdue means. He told them to subdue the earth, subdue it. And as we look, we're looking in the Garden of Eden, uh, which we established was made by God by the word of his mouth. And um, it was all good. It was all very good. And that's what the Lord always intended for man. See, our God is a good God. And he... Uh, intended for the man to live in this beautiful garden forever with him. But he told the man, you may freely eat the fruit of every tree in the garden except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you're sure to die. Now, he didn't mean physically die, because Adam and Eve continue to live. But they spiritually died. That means they were separated from God by their sin, their sin of d disobedience. And um, we read that um, Satan came into the garden and um, he tempted Eve and Adam was standing right there. And we can read that account and we should read that account. Now don't forget this man was given dominion, godlike rule and authority, the power to rule, control over a country or a region and to subdue the earth. So uh, man blew, uh, Adam blew it. <laughs> he basically blew it and he disobeyed God. So um, let's see where it happens that the, uh, the enemy comes in. Now he also was delegated to do this. To his, it was, and the word delegate means to assign or entrust to another. He was given that... Uh, delegation, that assignment to guard and keep the earth. He Authority is the power to give orders or to make decisions, the power or right to control someone or something. That's a lot of authority. That's a lot of dominion. That's a lot of power. Now, um, Let's look at Genesis 2 again. 
after he makes the man and the woman, they are walking in the garden one day in chapter 3. And it says, The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. And one day he asked the woman, Did God really say you must not eat fruit from any of the trees in the garden? <clears throat> Excuse me. So the serpent is really the devil in disguise in this case. The Bible says in the New Testament that Satan can come as an angel of light. He can appear, He's off, don't forget he's supernatural, and he can appear as any creature. So he comes in the garden as this uh, serpent or snake, and um, he starts questioning the woman. And he has the ability to speak. Most snakes can't speak. That should tell you that alone, that it was supernatural. <laughs> so she says, of course we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden. It's only from the, the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we're not allowed to eat. God said you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. And uh, Satan... Satan says back to her, you won't die. So in the Bible, in the New Testament, Satan is called the father of lies. And he always lies. And he's lying right here. You won't die, the serpent replied. How many times has God told you, don't do something? And you've been talked into doing it. Guess who, guess who was talking to you? He still lies today, and he lies through your thought life through your mind. And the only way you'll know when it's him and when it's not him is to have your mind renewed by the Word of God and have the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, living in you that will always lead you into all truth. You won't die, he says. God knows your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. Well, that was very appealing, wasn't it? You'll be like God. So he's appealing to their pride. But you see, when we read back there in uh, 2, it says, You may freely eat the fruit of every tree in the garden, this is God speaking, except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you're sure to die. The knowledge of good and evil. God wanted them to remain innocent, pure, not aware of evil, not even have the awareness of evil. And that's why he wanted them to not eat of it. But the serpent knew how to get around them and appeal to the pride. Well, you'll be like God. Your eyes will be opened. And you will be like God knowing both good and evil. That was very appealing. The woman was convinced, it says. She saw the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious and she wanted. See, see, sometimes evil can look very good. Very appealing. Promiscuous sex <laughs> can seem very appealing for the time being. The woman was convinced she saw the tree was beautiful and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. She took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband who was with her. Who was with her. Now, what was he supposed to do? Well, he should have said, Eve, we're not allowed to eat the fruit of that tree. So let's get away from it right now. And I, I command that snake to get out of my garden. Amen. <laughs> Don't forget he was given a, a, a authority, dominion, over everything and over every creeping thing and over every... God even let him name everything. That's a lot of clout, okay? He was supposed to subdue it. And I'm going to read those definitions to you again. Authority. The power or dominion, the power to give orders or to make decisions. The right or power to control someone or something. He was given dominion, the power to rule. 
control over a country, region. He was supposed to subdue the earth. Subdue means to conquer and to bring into subjection, to vanquish, to bring under control by exertion of your will. All he had to do was say to that snake, get out of my garden, but he didn't. And he wanted to please the woman. It's kind of the same today. <laughs> he wanted to please the woman. So unfortunately they did this. And let's see what happened here. The woman's convinced he was standing there with her. He ate it too. And at that moment, their eyes were opened. They weren't innocent any longer. And they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. See, they were naked. In those days, before the fall, we call when sin came into the garden, when Adam betrayed God, we call that the fall in Christianese. Now that the fall has happened, and sin has come, and man lusts, you can't go around naked. I'm sorry. That, that was before the fall that you could walk around the garden. You weren't even aware you were naked. You didn't even know what naked was. That's the way it was supposed to be, because you weren't aware of evil. But there is evil now in the world, and so you can't go around naked. I'm sorry. Those naked beaches are wrong. So, um, that's taking the Bible out of context. When people say, well, Adam was naked, Eve was naked, but that's before the fall. That's before sin entered into the earth. Now sin is here. And so a man sins when he looks at a woman now. See, Adam, when he looked at Eve, he didn't have any sin. They, wasn't, they, were, they were completely innocent. And they were created to, to uh, procreate. That was uh, in God's plan. But today, if a woman walks around naked and a man lusts after her, that's sin. So you can't walk around naked, ladies. And you can't walk around immodest either. I'm not putting all the fault on the woman, but you have certain responsibility to dress appropriately. Wow, how did I get into that? <laughs> okay. So, they felt their shame. See, when you sin, you feel shame. There's a certain amount of guilt, because we have a conscience. And there's a certain amount of uh, guilt you'll feel if, if you're cer ter not completely turned over to your evil ways. You will, uh, your conscience will bother you. It'll bother you a lot. And, um, these people that do these horrendous uh, murders and, and their conscience is gone. They violated their conscience. It's what the Bible calls a seared conscience. It's gone. But if you still have a, a conscience that, that by, bothers you, you need to hear, heed your conscience, what it's telling you to do and not to do. At that moment, their eyes were open. They were suddenly ashamed at their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together and covered themselves. See? There it is. Now they're aware, of, this, is, this is not good to go around naked anymore. Let's cover ourselves. Okay? So that's where dominion began. And then uh, Adam uh, disobeyed God. And they blamed each other, as you continue to read. Uh, God sees them walking in the garden and says, Where are you? I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. See, that's that shame thing there. I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. Who told you you were naked? See, they weren't even aware nakedness was a bad thing in the beginning. You eaten from that tree, whose fruit I command you not to eat? And the man said, it's the woman's fault. It's her fault. <laughs> it was the woman who gave me the fruit, and I ate it. This is verse 12 in chapter 3. And then the Lord God said to the woman, what have you done? The serpent deceived me. Oh, now it's the snake's fault. <laughs> she replied, 
That's why I hate it. And people love the blame game. You know, they don't like to take responsibility for their wrong actions. Uh, it's, it's someone else's fault. It's because of them that, 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 it ha that I'm acting this way. It's not my, it's not my fault. Oh, God, God knows whose fault it is. And you can't fool God. Don't forget Adam was placed there to guard and keep the garden. And I think I told you what he should have said to her right away. But God knew everything that was going to happen. God is uh, completely aware of everything, every thought, before it even happens. And so he had a plan. He knew that... Uh, that um, Adam and Eve were going to do this. But you say, well, why did he do that? Why did he allow that, that snake there, that serpent there, the devil there? Well, God wants us to choose him freely. See, he hasn't made us puppets. He's given us a free will. And you can exercise that will any way you want. You can exercise that will to obey God or you can exercise that will to disobey God and do your own thing. And um, when you do that, you pretty much say, Devil, I'm serving you. You're my God. The Lord is not my God. You're my God. So what happened? Well, let's read on. They blame each other, and then the Lord God says, there's a curse that comes onto the earth. Because you've done this, you're cursed, he says to the serpent, more than all animals, domestic and wild. You'll crawl on your belly, groveling in the dust as long as you live, and I'll cause hostility between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers, and, and he will strike your head and you will strike his heel. Now, this is a, a precursor to speaking about Jesus who's going to come and bruise the head of Satan. The woman is the Virgin Mary, and she is going to bear a son, and he's going to bruise the head of the devil. So even now, in the beginning, and that's the reason I had to go to the beginning of the Bible to talk about authority and dominion, which is what I'm going to be speaking about, mostly. Um, it was established that Adam had dominion. He was supposed to guard and keep subdue the earth. He had power and control over it, authority, rule, and, and power and control. Satan fooled him, as he still does today, because he's still the father of lies. God allowed it because he wanted Adam to, to, to be tested. Are you going to pass the test? Well, he didn't pass the test. And God, in his mercy, still was going to, I wouldn't say bail us out, but rescue us he still was going to rescue us and he didn't have to rescue us so let's see what it says here i'm going to read some commentary after the serpent deceived eve into rejecting god's rule and i'm reading the new living translation which has terrific commentary after the serpent deceived eve into rejecting god's rule adam also rebelled their willful disobedience disrupted their relationship and separated them from God. God looked for Adam after his rebellion. He was hiding among the trees, already aware of his alienation. When God questioned him, Adam blamed Eve, and by implication, God. Adam's because, you know, he made the woman God, so it's your fault, God, because you made her. It's always as somebody else's fault. When God questioned him, Adam blamed Eve. Eve. Adam's rebellion brought hardship in governing the earth as well as physical and spiritual death. God provided animal skins to cover Adam and Eve and promised that Eve's offspring would defeat Satan. Eve's offspring. That was the thing I just read about. He'll strike your head and you'll strike his heel. Promise Eve's offspring would bring defeat to Satan. It was through Eve that all other women came, including uh, Mary, who bore Jesus, and he would be the one to take the authority back from the devil. 
So let's look at, um, we're on three, right? Yes, chapter three. Okay. Since you listened to your wife and ate from the tree, whose fruit I commanded you not to eat, <clears throat> the ground is cursed because of you. See, so now we've got weeds and drought. All this is a result of the fall. We would have still been living in the Garden of Eden where everything was good. But now it's all the result of the fall. The ground is cursed because of you. All your life you will struggle to, to scratch a living from it. It will grow thorns and thistles. For you, though you will eat of its grains, and by the sweat of your brow will you have food to eat until you return to the ground from which you were made. For you were made from dust, and to dust you will return. Wow. So this was, uh, this was very, a traumatic thing that happened. And verse 20 says, Then the Lord God says, Look, the human beings have become like us, knowing both good and evil. Now, who's us there? Well, that's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They were always together. Knowing both good and evil, they're like us. What if they reach out and take from the tree of life and eat it? Then they will live forever. So the Lord banished them from the Garden of Eden, and he sent out Adam out to cultivate the ground from which he had been made. And after sending them out, the Lord God stationed mighty cherubim to the east garden of Eden, and he placed a flaming sword that flashed back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. After that, they were banned from that garden. They couldn't enter it no more. They couldn't eat of the tree of life. They would live in sin forever otherwise. So, now there's a little thing here on uh, original sin. <clears throat> Genesis 3 describes how human moral innocence collapsed through rebellion. What God declared as very good was no longer completely so. Man and woman ate the fruit, the promised knowledge of good and evil, and thus broke God's command. Worse, they tried to become like God, and thus fell from their sinless state. Alienated from God, one another, and creation, they also became subject to death. The term original sin denotes sin's complete universal inf infiltration into indiv individual lives and human society as a result of human rebellion. When the first man and woman ate the fruit in disobedience to God, they forfeited their own innocence and that of their children and that of the entire human race. Wow. But God had a plan. It says the first Adam introduced sin, but the second Adam, Jesus Christ, is sin's antidote. And we're going to look at that. And I think um, we're going to stop for today. Just wetting your appetite, it gets better and better. You know, there's a lot of answers in the Bible to what's going on in the world today. And if you don't read it, you'll be disillusioned and, and subject and vulnerable to a lot of lies. But worse than that, when the time comes to exercise your authority, because Jesus Christ in the New Testament says in Matthew 28, I have been given authority, he says, over heaven and the earth. His death on the cross conquered the enemy, even though the devil still is here, only for a season and only with God's permission, he has given, he, Jesus has the keys of heaven and hell and the, all the authority is in his hands. And he still permits the enemy to be here to see who you will serve, who you will choose. You don't have to be deceived and you don't have to be at the whim of the devil. Because the Bible says he prowls around like a hungry lion, ready to whom he may, he may devour. He's ready to devour you too. But Jesus said in Luke 9, I have given you authority 
to tread on the serpent, the scorpion. He's talking to the believer. I have given you authority to tread on the serpent, the scorpion, and all the power of the enemy, and in no way shall he harm you. We'll learn more about this later. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this short time in your word. Even that short time has borne fruit and has blessed us with the knowledge of God and the knowledge of his plan for us. Your word is truth and it is life. And you put your word even above your name. Heaven and earth will pass away, but your word will never pass away. That's how powerful it is. So we thank you for your word, Lord. It's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And I'm going to just call this Adam Blewett. Bye for now.